I'm Jake, and uh, before being trapped in a world with sound-sensitive murder beasts, I had two loves in my life, science and movies. So I decided to put myself in one of my favorite monster films, A Quiet Place, to find out. Hey, hey, could you be quiet back there? You don't want to die like the kid in the movie did, huh? Horribly, horrible death. <laughs> Kids, am I right? A bundle of laughs. But this one is uh, pretty loud, but I found him wandering around, decided maybe I'd help him find his family. Well, I look for my missing Vsauce family. And as long as we don't make a lot of sound, I think we should be okay. Which got me thinking. Hey, kid, come on. What is sound? What exactly does it mean to hear? Is it possible to weaponize sound? And perhaps most importantly, could you stay quiet enough to survive the wrath of a bloodthirsty alien with superhuman hearing? The alien says... Could you survive a quiet place? That was close. The kid? Oh, he should be fine. Also, this is a rather serious way to illustrate that we can't make a sound. And speaking of which, sound is really a series of longitudinal pressure waves that travel through a medium like air or water. But they can also travel through solid objects too. Hearing is just the detection of these increases and decreases in pressure that occur at regular intervals as small segments of air are compressed. These rapid changes in pressure enter our ear canals and vibrate our eardrums. And those vibrations are translated into electrical pulses in the middle and inner ear, which then travel to the auditory cortex where the brain processes them and we perceive sound. The mechanical energy of sound turns into electrical energy, which is also how microphones and speakers work. And speaking of microphones, this little device contains one and it uses it to measure the intensity of sound signals. Could be pretty useful in figuring out whether we're being loud enough to get eaten by one of those horrific monsters that's making my life hell. Oh, you're still alive. Ah, oh, kid, I really thought I lost you out there. It's, it's good to see you've been, wait, wait, what is that? Don't you, don't you do it. Do it, do it. Oh no! Kid, come on! We need to find a quiet place. But what is the quietest place. What is quiet? Can we imagine it in our minds? It's kind of a difficult concept to, to understand because have you ever really experienced true quiet? Because sound, as we know, travels. It hits surfaces, bounces back off, it reflects. So if we wanted to, we'd have to create a room filled with sound panels like the ones behind me that absorb those reflections. If we wanted to find the quietest place, we would need an anechoic chamber. The world's quietest place is an anechoic chamber that had a decibel level of negative 20.6. To put that into perspective, zero decibels is the lowest a human ear can hear. These rooms work by absorbing all reflected sound, leaving you with only direct sound. So if there's nothing in the room to make noise, then there is no noise, right? Now, the only way to experience an anechoic chamber is to actually be in an anechoic chamber. And when you're in there, you would notice, even though it's quiet, there is still sound. So I'm going to do my best right now to demonstrate that for you. So you know what? Let's, let's get rid of the air conditioning noise. All right, that's better. And also the, the hum of the lights. You know what? Let's just get rid of all ambient noise around me. And now it's just my voice. But even the microphone that's picking up my voice is making noise. It's picking up other sounds. So let's isolate my voice. Okay, now it's just you and me, but we can still hear sound coming from right here. So let's get rid of that too. When we remove all external noise, what we're left with is internal noise. That is the sounds of our body, the blood pumping through your veins, your eyes blinking, the fabric on your clothes when you move. We are always surrounded by sound. 
So here on Earth, there is no true quiet. That is a place completely devoid of sound. Because as we remove the noises around us, we start to hear things that we generally don't. And if we can hear those sounds, then the aliens can probably hear them too, which makes sense, because in the movie, they would mask their conversations by going to a loud, consistent waterfall. That would be pretty useful right now. That was a pretty cool demonstration, right? Right, kid? Kid? <sighs> well, he's probably just a lot faster than me. We should keep moving, though. Oh, hey. Uh, sorry to bother you. I'm just uh, looking for a little kid. He's been walking around and... Yeah, yeah, sorry. Okay, that's my bad. So I'm, um, I'm looking for a little kid, and he, he's pretty loud. Uh, and, you know, the aliens, they're pretty diabolical, so I've just been... No, I don't think they followed me at all. Hey, uh, what are you doing? So, you've been able to keep yourself safe here from the monsters, but what's your secret? Okay, so, I don't really know how to ask this, um, <laughs> yeah. In addition to reading lips, another way deaf people can experience sound is to feel it. Our senses are densely interconnected, and since sound exists as a physical vibration, it's not surprising that our senses of hearing and touch are connected. Research suggests that our brains are wired from birth to incorporate information from other senses when we listen. We can actually have you experience this at home. We've isolated some frequencies of everyday sounds to see if you can guess what they are just from feeling the speakers on whatever device you're watching with. So. Put in some earplugs or some unplugged headphones and put your hand on your device's speaker. We'll play four sounds. Guess what they are and then we'll visually reveal each one. So, could you feel through your fingertips the vibrations from the sounds that we played? And could you tell what they were? Okay, so now that we've experienced sound by feeling it, can we experience sound by seeing? Good question. I'll be right back, Ricky. Here we have a speaker that I'm going to cover in different substances to help show the physical vibrations generated by sound. This one we've covered with sand, while this one is covered in a substance made by both cornstarch and water. It's a non-Newtonian fluid, meaning it is both a liquid and a solid, depending on the amount of force exerted on it. Okay, let's drop the bass. The sand is sitting atop a chladni plate, a piece of metal that restricts sound waves to a finite space, allowing us to see the standing wave pattern associated with different frequencies. Now each frequency causes the plate to vibrate in a different way and the sand arranges itself along the lines of those vibrations. Where there are the least vibrations, that's called the nodes of the standing wave. And they move away from the parts with the most vibration, the anti-nodes. So you are actually seeing the sound as it moves across the chladni plate and through the sand. The non-Newtonian fluid, our oobleck, provides more of a three-dimensional visualization of the standing wave pattern. The peaks and valleys of the oobleck are the antinodes, and the flat areas are the nodes. Fun fact, standing waves that move through liquid are called Faraday waves. So both the sand and the oobleck make the normally invisible, that is sound waves, visible. Plus, it just looks really cool. You know, 
You can come with me if you want. Be a great help. Hey, I'm set up here. Thank you, and I will. Safety first, Ricky. No, you save yourself, Ricky. I got this. Come on! I don't, I don't think we're gonna make it. And as always, thanks for watching! See the trap door works. Ugh. Yeah, and I'm totally fine as well. Hey, 12 tone. Hey, 12 tone. Oh, sorry. I was working on a really tricky modulation. Hey, you wouldn't happen to know a good pivot chord from E to B flat, would you? No, I've uh, been a little busy trying to survive and also uh, looking for my Vsauce family. Have you seen these dudes? And oh, maybe a little kid. He's like, yay, hi, likes to make noise. Nah, dude, I've been down here. Don't you know there's aliens running around up there? They've got superhuman hearing. Yeah, I know. Ah, but did you know we might be able to defeat it by weaponizing sound? So these aliens have an extreme sensitivity to sound. That might seem like a superpower, but couldn't it also be a weakness? I have a theory that we could use sound itself to fight them. After all, what would your weapon of choice be if you had to fight someone with an extreme gluten sensitivity? Gluten? I gotta admit, that logic is sound. So a young person can usually hear sonic frequencies between about 20 hertz and 20,000 hertz. And just as a refresher, hertz is a unit of cycles per second. So a 20 hertz sound is created when air alternates between low and high pressure 20 times in a second. And as adults age, the high end of their hearing deteriorates. So if I play this 18 kilohertz signal, it acts as a kind of dog whistle for younger listeners who still have the high end of their hearing intact. I mean, it's the same principle as an actual dog whistle, which works because dogs can hear up to 45 kilohertz, which is well above the human range. So what was that about making a weapon out of sound to defeat the aliens? Well, people have come up with a lot of interesting ways of weaponizing sound. You've probably heard of that thing where an opera singer shatters a wine glass with just the power of their voice. Breaking a glass with sound is very cool, but probably not powerful enough for our needs because in the film A Quiet Place, they use a high frequency sound weapon to kill the aliens. So, is there a device in real life that can do the same thing? Well, we just happen to have a machine to test just that. And what are we testing it on? Me. Our sound cannon is made up of four speakers with their cones positioned to send sound waves in the same direction. To discover the power and efficacy of this sound cannon, we're testing two factors, distance from the weapon and the frequency of the sound being emitted. It's connected to a frequency generator that will provide the sound which will be shot at me. All right, let's make some noise. I am five meters away from the device. Now let's take it up to 4,000 Hertz, please. This sound generated is incredibly annoying. And we don't want to subject you to it, so please enjoy Box Cello Suite number one. We've set the device to about 130 decibels, the same volume as a jet engine taking off. While the volume will cause some pain in my ears, it won't incapacitate me. All right, now let's just go up to two meters. At two meters, the effects are immediate. The pain is overwhelming, freezing me in place. Turns out the pain is because the frequency is triggering my auditory nociception system, a single set of neurons in your ear that react to high frequencies. When cells in the inner ear are damaged, like by a really high frequency, they release a chemical that activates the auditory nociception system, which in turn signals the brain that you are in extreme pain. Although this really hurts my head, 
Unlike in the movie, it probably won't make it explode. Nuts. It felt like there was this viscous liquid in my ears and I couldn't really hear. I still can't really hear. Uh, I don't know what level of volume I'm at, but don't do that. It's a very good deterrent. However, it would not kill the alien. If only we had some sort of handheld, narrative-friendly sound cannon. Like this? 12-tone. That is perfect. It's actually pretty simple. As you can see, I hooked up a cassette tape to a megaphone, ran it to a frequency oscillator to pump up the signal, and that's pretty much it. You know, this is amazing. Do you think I could borrow it? Because it could be very helpful in trying to find my Vsauce family and maybe even that kid if I see him again. Yeah, for sure. Oh, thanks. Or... Do you need some backup? I could come with you, help you look. Yeah, that would be great. And you get some fresh air, you know, that might be good for you. Yeah, plus, you know what they say, two heads are better than one. So if we work together, I'm sure we can find your friends. Yeah, that's true. It just goes to show the power of a good collaboration. I mean, you take some scientific rigor, add in some musical curiosity, and boom, you've got a sound cannon. Hey, volume. Oh. I'm just saying, how cool is it that you and I were able to make a weapon that could destroy these aliens? <laughs> Glad you decided to make some more noise. Wait. No. No. And as always, thanks for watching. This season on System. Oh no. Come get some! Let's make me hypothermic. Tear this body apart. Oh, the need, need for speed! speed. I don't think you're gonna survive this one. <laughs>